Thank you for joining us on the Evolve Your Brand Podcast. I'm your host, Aliyah Merkies, and I am excited to have our guest today. You're gonna have to wait for a second. Just wanna thank Icon Industry. Shane, you love yourself so much. You went and hired two other people with your name on it. Steven, I love you so much. I named the eel after you. You guys are amazing. I appreciate you. Without further ado, Gigi Benitez, welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm excited I, to be here. I'm excited. So we met about a week ago. I love your energy. Thank you. Did it. And, and oh, I appreciate it. <laughs> so you have many layers. You have a background in public relations. You are my connection to all things real estate in Dubai, which I'm really, really excited because you dropped some knowledge before we got started. So we're going to hear all about Dubai. And you have a podcast. I do. And you have, you're a mom. I am. And a wife. And a wife. And a, a skincare founder and an entrepreneur. Yes. How, how do you have time to fit in the podcast? Um, <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> right? Okay. So let, let's jump right into it. Uh, how did you end up in San Diego? Like, how'd you grow up? So I was born in Detroit, actually. No way. Yeah, where most of Chaldeans are. It's what okay. I'm, I'm half Chaldean. And then my family came on over to San Diego when I was about three years old. So I was raised in San Diego, educated San Diego, attended UCSD Revell College, degree in economics, worked in San Diego my whole life. I just hit 50 years old. So I've been here for half a century. No way. Yeah. <laughs> you don't look, I would have never guessed that. Thank you. Get it. Thank you. Get it. Thank You're you. aging. Thank You're you. aging well. I'm Get it. I'm good with it. Um, uh, so you were three when you moved here. What's your fondest memory of growing up in San Diego? Hmm. Traveling outside of San Diego. Really? You don't like San Diego? <laughs> I find it very boring here. Wow. Yes. Okay. And, Spicy. And I like it. Yeah. I, oh. really, I mean, when I look back, because I've, I've been doing a lot of self-reflecting lately, hmm. maybe the age thing. And I look at San Diego is beautiful. It's America's finest city. It's clean. It's beautiful. The water is gorgeous. I love my walks in the evenings or in the mornings by myself. And you can't beat the climate. It's the best climate in the world. And I've done it. Been here. Done that. And if I look back at all my fondest memories of my life, they've actually been traveling. So, Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Nothing wrong with yeah. that. You and are... obviously raising my children, you know, here, but also the travels with the children as well. So right. my ki ch children are very well traveled. My husband's very well traveled, and that's what we really enjoy. Uh, tell me about since you are uh, the connect Dubai connector. As I, I'm going to frame that for you. We got to figure out a name. Uh, what it what attracted you? When did you first go to Dubai? Tell me that story. Great question. So I actually, and I think you're Middle Eastern as well, right? Yes had zero desire to go to the Middle East. Okay. Being born and raised in the United States, even I had misconceptions of what the Middle East would be like. Okay. So no desire, I fought it. One of my best friends from high school, her name is Zainab. We attended Valhalla High School out here together. And then I think she finished her four-year degree here and then went and got her master's in the Middle East and ended up in Dubai. Kept saying to me, you need to come to Dubai, come to Dubai for 20 years. And I said, no, I'll pass, I'll pass. I'm not interested in going to a Middle Eastern country. She's like, you're being ignorant. You need to come. You don't understand what it's like here. And so I had two, two and a half years ago, I said, hey, I want to go to Turkey. And she goes, I said, will you go with me? She said, on one condition, you stop by Dubai first, spend a few days here, and I'll go with you to Istanbul. So I said, fine, begrudgingly. And so I just decided to do a five-day layover just to appease her and be respectful because she sees me always traveling and not stopping by there. Right. <laughs> Within two days, I was crying. I could not believe mean? I had missed that feeling mm. that I had in Dubai. And I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, Dubai is just like Vegas on steroids. It's manufactured. It's fake. There's absolutely an aspect of Dubai that is that. But what resonated with me was walking through the old Dubai, the El Fahidi district, what Dubai was before it is now. And that was the closest I'd ever been to my culture and my background. I'm obviously not going to Iraq anytime soon or going back to my dad's from Jerusalem anytime soon. So being able to have that sort of connection. And then I felt a calling. I, I don't know how else to explain it. I felt like there's more for me to do. And... 
when I was there and I saw it was, I go to New York every three to four months for my PR business. And I always say, every time I come back from New York, I feel re-energized for another quarter because you go to New York and it's that energy and it's everything is happening. Mm. Well, Dubai is that on steroids for me. It's the innovation, the production, the creation, the 85% of Dubai are made up of expats, all these different cultures and religions coming and coexisting in a harmonious, productive way, everybody on the same page of just trying to produce a beautiful life for their families. And I wanted to be a part of it. And so when I started to investigate more and realized that real estate is one of the hottest industry in Dubai, it's actually not oil, contrary to what a lot of people think. It's real estate is one of the top industries. And why haven't we been a part of it? Why haven't Americans, Canadians? Well, because there was, it wasn't lack of interest it was that trust factor of having someone who is American based because there are 15,000 real estate agents in Dubai if you want to call and try to find somebody. And it's a transient business there, but somebody who's American based has a license here, a real estate license here, and understands the American mentality because we're very different. Our purchasing uh, process is very different from people from around the world. We just happen to be ask more cynical, ask a lot more questions, lack of trust in the Middle East. Mm. And so my job is to really break misconceptions, educate, help understand, and go on a scavenger hunt to find the answers that investors in North America have. And that's what I've been doing for the past couple of years. I've really immersed myself quite significantly, invested quite significantly in what I'm doing. I go and spend months at a time in Dubai and I'm on, I'm on a mission. I'm on a mission to create a, a bridge between North America, American and Canadians, and the opportunities in Dubai. And that's what I've been doing. Um, I can feel your passion. You're intense. I freaking <laughs> love it. What, uh, what, I, I know you talked about the energy and uh, someone was saying that to me about New York, that there's a different energy. There's a different vibe. Have you been in New York? I haven't. You have not? I have not. Okay. I have not. It's on my list. Definitely need to I, do it. I definitely. Yes. Uh, on top of that list is actually Dubai. So I'm curious, what's the difference in energy between the two? You said Safety. it's on steroids. Safety. Really? So okay. the difference, I love New York. I love New York. And in another life, I should have lived in New York. And I don't know if you remember that Buzz Lerman song or speech that was given many, many years ago that went viral. And it's like, live in New York once but leave before it makes you hard. That's like this. Right. this. I should have done it and I wish I would have done it, but my life was very different. I was married off very young and anyways, different life path. But Dubai is that times a thousand and safe. Mm. I have, I did a TikTok experiment where I left, left my designer bag on a bench on a Friday afternoon in the on the beach, JBR, one of the busiest beaches and areas in Dubai. And I had a secret camera and I backed up for 15, 20 minutes just to show that's the safety as a woman. Okay, so you know, I don't know if you know the thing there is to book your place at a restaurant, you just put your phone and your wallet down and you go walk around the mall and you come back, no one's touching it. Nobody messes with you because nobody wants to get kicked out of the country and it works. Oh, got it. Okay, as a woman traveling by myself. I mean, in New York, I did. And thank God, dozens and dozens of times, and I was fine. But I remember my husband always call, always call me and say, okay, make sure to text me before you leave the restaurant for dinner. Don't, try not to walk home. And I'm like, no, I want to walk back to the hotel. In Dubai, there is no worrying about that. Right. So it's, it's New York with regards to the diversity, with regards to that hustle, that high energy. You know money's being made all around you. Right. Then add safety. It's a, it's a lifestyle on steroids. It is incredible. And that's why it's attracting so many people from all over the world. Right. People think that it's only Arabs there. No, 85% yeah. expats from all over the world. In fact, right now, UK, huge migration. They're the number one investors last year was Russians, of course. And we know there, was a lot, there were a lot of issues in Russia. But if you go to Dubai, you just stand in the mall and you look around you, it's every culture every language and english is the most commonly spoken language yeah that that's crazy i was watching uh I, this was off topic but i was watching a soccer team 
and they're uh, in the English Premier League. And I was shocked at how many of the players, I mean, they're from all over the Brazil, Spain, Portugal, they're all speaking English. Mm -hmm. I'm like, whoa. Uh -huh. Okay. I mean, that was mind blowing because uh -huh. you, you get a couple, uh -huh. but then when everybody, so it doesn't surprise me that it was 85%. What was the one thing that you love about the country besides the safety? I mean, what about the people? So now, and of course, you know, Dubai is a city, right? Yeah. Within the country, the UAE and the UAE is made up of seven different emirates. And I visited uh, Ras Al Khaimah, Abu Dhabi and Dubai. So those are the three that I visited. And what I love, I feel more accepted and mm. open there than any, and I'm a Christian Arab, than I have anywhere else I've ever traveled. There aren't conversations about where are you from? No, where are you really from? Oh, what's your religion? It's just, that's not, that's not what it's about. It's more like, hey, what do you do? Mm. Wow, what's your education level? The level of education amongst women and powerful positions. Um, in fact, I believe that they're, the highest number of women in human resources positions. And that's one of the most powerful position a person can have in a corporation. And the it's, it's progressed so much. It's what I would call a utopia of how society should be, where it doesn't matter where you come from, doesn't matter what your religion is. It's all about, are you a good person trying to produce? And that's what it is. And that's what I feel in Dubai, unlike what my conceptions were before I went. I'm in. Yeah. Uh, where do I sign? Um, and you, you are you once. are the Dubai. <laughs> you only go once. That's the thing. Like, there's a lot of places that you visit and you go once. You're like, okay, been there, done that. Don't need to go back. Right. Dubai pulls you. Okay. So the the funny thing is, your your show name is Dubai Connect Podcast. I totally get it. Done. I, I hope that I hope the city hires you to do. They the need PR. to. Why haven't Why they? Haven't they? I don't How know. dare they? Uh, this is a service <laughs> announcement for. Hello. Dubai, I just want you to know, I advocate for this young lady. Uh, it's amazing. I'm so excited. I was already excited. But it's the entry gets different. And safety, you know what stands out to me is the connections that you're talking about. They're more concerned about connections than status. You know, I mean, the there status are, is there. There is, of course. Of course. I mean, there's it's, it's always going to be there. There is, like you yeah. can say, like a hierarchy of the ultra wealthy compared. Life. And that's just where it is in any society like yeah. that. I mean, in America and any society. Um, however, with 85% of them being expats, those are the people that you're mingling with on a day to day basis, and we're all on the same page. We're all just going 100,000 100, miles a minute. So we're all together. We're in it together. And nobody wants to leave. Nice. So uh, from an opportunity perspective, I'm an investor in the U.S. What what's what does that even look like? Where does it begin? Yeah. So great question. And I will tell you, that's the most exciting. Okay. Now we talked about the emotional and why I'm connected from an emotional standpoint. I have this calling and I want to create that bridge and demystify Dubai through my air eyes as a first generation Arab American. Now let's just talk business, straight numbers. Okay. Dubai is one of the most competitively priced price per square foot. It's still considered affordable and underpriced according to UBS bubble index, most recent report 2023. So you're talking about a few hundred dollars a square foot and prime properties at a few hundred dollars a square foot. So you get in at some of the best pricing compared to markets such as Los Angeles, New York, Toronto, Tokyo, London, et cetera. Mm. Then you look at capital appreciation projections and you're looking at conservatively speaking about 10% a year is what the last projections were. Long-term rental returns, and this can be all fact check on property finder as Dubai is a really transparent real estate market, averages between seven and 9%. Short-term rental returns, 12 to 15% such as Airbnb. No property taxes, no capital gains taxes. Dubai does not have income taxes. Now you as a US citizen, or if you're a US citizen, you have to report your income worldwide, but the fact that you don't have any additional taxes in Dubai and you're making all this profit in the city of the future that's continuing to expand and grow, just basic economics, there is not enough supply to meet the demand. They right. have a population expansion, tourism expansion, and only so much land that they can build on. Okay, so uh, talk about the land they can build on. Uh, 
what I appreciate about you is we were talking about U.S. real estate, and you said that you you had some very candid comments, mm -hmm. and, and I did as well. <clears throat> so that's that's not online. I mean, do they actually have uh, limitations with regards to the building? They're building up. Like, is there actual limitations well, on how much housing they can if build? If you look at Dubai, Dubai yeah. is very small. Right. Right. And there's only so much waterfront property you can create. Right. So, for example, some of the most successful areas have been downtown or the marina or the very iconic Palm Jumeirah. But that's it. Those are already built out. Wow. Plus. So now you're starting to go further south and you're starting to uh, south towards Abu Dhabi, which is the other emirate next to it, and further north towards Ras Al Khaimah, which. This is also quite exciting news for real estate investors globally. Ras Al Khaimah is the site, the first and only ever gaming casino that has broken ground when a casino has broken ground on a $4 wow. billion dollar gaming casino. Got it. And then you have all around there other high-end brands like um, the, the Hyatt, or not the Hyatt, sorry, I think it's the, the Marriott. You have, I'm forgetting the beach club residence, Nikki Beach, sorry, Nobu. You have all these other brands, Ellington, um, Emar, building an address hotel all around this Wynn Casino. So now you're attracting a whole other market of, let's say, the Chinese that would typically come all the way out to, to Las Vegas. They don't need to now. That's a stopping ground. And Dubai is the entry point as far as the airport. And now more Westerners are going to say, wait, there's a gambling casino in the Middle East? Again, breaking misconceptions and continuing right. to draw tourism but not just tourism not just the short-term rental return opportunities what about all the employees for example at the four billion dollar one casino where are they going to live so it's just always something is happening it's such a dynamic real estate market so even though there is only so much land that can be built upon there's they we're there's so much happening in the emirates sur surrounding even abu dhabi for example that the opportunity is now yeah and this is the time to get become a part of it. Because I mean, let, let, let's be realistic with real estate in the US, unless you're in the business and you have access to capital and, and going and finding, yeah, going and finding deals. Like I, I have a lot of uh, families that I help that, that have capital, they wanna invest, but does it make sense in the US right now? Does it? No. Does it in California? We're it priced does. out. Oh, we're California. I mean, we're, we're I wasn't even Diego. talking about California. And San Diego. We just got <laughs> ranked as the one of the most unaffordable cities in the world. Yeah, Gigi, I mean, to, to, I mean, unless you're a flipper or something like that right. and you know the business right. really, really well and can offload properties, why in the world why? would you invest in California? And anyone that's telling you, like, unless you have experience investing mm -hmm. in California, what a dangerous place mm -hmm. to invest. It's sad. And then what about property taxes? How much it eats in? Like I know, <laughs> or even homeowners association fees, service charges. Have you seen homeowners minimal. insurance? It, yeah, it's, it's ridiculous and it eats in. So it doesn't make business right. and financial sense. Now, some of the objections I've heard is, okay, Good. but how am I going to get on a plane and handle owning property in another continent? You don't have to. I'm glad that you. I'm glad that you brought that up because one thing that I've seen with a lot of podcasts, and and you're a host, so uh, I'm not here to like just talk about the pros right. and not talk about right. the cons, right? Because in any investing, there's always risk. There's always risk. Mm -hmm. Like anything is a risk. Mm -hmm. You can't get reward without risk. No, and real estate is real estate no matter where you are. Thank right? you. That, I mean, that's the truth. You can't keep going up. <laughs> it's going to end up, you know, at some point leveling out. And I don't have a crystal ball to see into the future. Right. However, some of the objections, the most common ones are easily overcome. Such as. Let's go. Okay. I can't get on a plane and go handle my rental property there. You don't need to. I believe the numbers are about 76% of investors in Dubai are globally based. Everything is done to make it so easy for you to start your investment, manage your investment, check the progress of your investment online. For example, there's this app called the REST app from the Dubai Land Department where you can track in real time the progress of your pre-construction property. Property management, easiest business model in Dubai. Every broker will offer it but you can also do really high level, work with really high level property management companies. I've done some podcast cost interviews with them that talk about the process. It's all digitized as well. They are catering to global real estate investors. How come? 
because they want to be basically what Switzerland is for banking. They want to be that for real estate. They want to be that place. They want, they are constantly innovating and creating in order to attract people from all over the world. As he's famous, the the chef for saying, the leader, I want to be number one in my lifetime. I want this city to be number one in the world for everything. It's the biggest mall in the world. It's the tallest building Gigi, in the world. Gigi, that's intense. That's what he says. It's the, it's the longest pool in the world. It's the biggest um, racetrack in the world. It's the best lifestyle in the world. And they do. You know what's so crazy, Ollie? You know, we walk around America and you yeah. talk to people, and people are pretty dissatisfied with all the politics going on oh, I'll, I'll, in the United States. I'm going to be very candid. Both like, ways. go ahead. Both yeah, ways. continue. Okay, I mean, I won't even get into it because it's just. It's Makes pointless. Yeah. You go to Dubai, everybody loves their leader. And I'm I'm talking about private conversation. I'm like, hey, how do you feel about the fact that, for example, you're not allowed to legally protest? Like, protest against what? I go, well, you know, if the government does something you don't like. They're like, what does the government do that we don't like? They said this, into, everybody will tell you the same thing. This government is all about its people. It's already wealthy. They're already Wait a wealthy. Minute, time out. Time out. Mm-hmm. You, you, a government that's actually mm-hmm. for the people. people. They're not, that's why there's no income tax. They're let not me, looking. I want to get, sit on that. Yeah, you didn't even let me imagine? have a moment. Can you imagine? I was. I was. Yeah. Like, do you see the yeah. my facial expression? Can you expression? imagine a government mm-hmm. that's for mm-hmm. its people? Its people. And you can look at something like COVID. How they handled COVID. What, how what, what happened to us? How many months were we shut down? How many businesses went out of business? How many people had mental health issues? They shut down with eighty five percent expats. Imagine, they shut down for two months maximum, and that caused a significant investor trust afterwards. And you saw so many global investors say, "Wait, that's how they were able to handle," and natural, you know, uh, something that we could not have predicted, a disaster, we, even the floods recently, the way that they come together to make the life so beautiful for its residents is so refreshing to be there. And I even talk about things like freedom of speech. Well, how do you feel? Well, what freedom of speech? Because we see y'all getting fired over there if you say one thing that, you know, someone doesn't like you saying. They love their leaders and the leaders love their people. And it's refreshing. And, and the energy in the city. Look at your enthusiasm. You're more excited talking about that than you are. It's crazy. I, I know. It's. I say it's a utopia. Dubai is how the world should be. Well, you took the words right out of my mouth. Mm-hmm. I'm like, uh, and, and let's get real with communities for a second because I've been thinking a lot about it. One of the things that has really turned me off over the past like five years with real estate is I didn't realize, like I got into this to help people. I didn't realize how transactional it is. Everything comes, and and whether people like it or not, like just ask people in real estate, they'll tell you. There's so many people that are all transactional, don't really care about the people that they serve. I didn't get into real estate for that. I got into it to connect with people and actually change people's life through real estate and and be honest with them and, and say how much sacrifice is required to buy real estate in California. Do you know what I recommend to families now? Why don't you go become an investor in a different state? There's better chances of you owning in a different state than in California. And right here. Because California doesn't, and hey, the state of California doesn't give a fuck whether you <laughs> become a homeowner or not. Mm-hmm. There's no incentive. So now with regards to that transactional real estate, yeah, that's, uh, let me back up. <clears throat> that's how it is in Dubai as well. Yeah. And let me share with you why. Because real estate is such a huge industry and moneymaker, you have over 15,000 real estate agents in Dubai. Wow, that's mind blowing. And not all of them are licensed. So okay. they're starting to get stricter and stricter about um, having the RERA and being licensed. My partner is. And I'm a certified international property specialist as well. Um, but that's rare. So you have these people that come in from all these different areas that are like, I'm going to go to Dubai and I'm going to make a ton of money. Right. Okay. And you ha- you go, you work with a developer or an, a brokerage and you have three months to make the money. And if you don't, you're out because that's probably all you have in your, you know, bank account to suffice. And if you don't make it, you're back into your village or whatever town you came from, wherever you are around the world. So the real estate market in Dubai is extremely transactional. I would say it's even significantly worse than I've 
found here in California. Wow. <laughs> we are much stricter here in California with NAR and all the rules that we have to abide by. And, you know, my broker always telling me these are the rules, et cetera. Right. So that is another reason why I created what I did is because I believe that some of the benefits of being American is bringing that more relationship-based mentality from my businesses, having been in pharmaceutical sales, own a PR firm, you know, being a publicist, and working with an incredible broker here who's been in the game for th over 30 years is bringing that to the table. And I am relationship-based. And also, because I'm not somebody that has to come and make it in three months, I've already, I'm 50 years old. I've already been there, done that, proven myself, had my successful careers. So just like you, my intention is not just to make money. I'm That's not what I'm doing. For me, it's that emotional tie and connection of opening people's eyes to what's happening in Dubai. And real estate is just the vehicle for that. Yeah. So how, I mean, do you have a sto story of someone that, that you know that's bought real estate in Dubai? Like, what was that experience like? I'm really curious. Yeah, I, I have a really cool story. Let's so I actually have a San Diego investor. Okay. Who, I don't, I can't remember. I have some, bill, I had some billboards around town because I collaborate with Ronson um, Shamoon International Tax Accountant Firm. And actually, Andrea Cisneros Valdez, their international tax accountant, came out with me to Dubai to speak at the largest property show in Dubai earlier this year to talk about international taxes when it comes to investing in Dubai. So I had some billboards around town. I can't remember if he saw me on the billboard or found me through my podcast, but he reached out to me and said, listen, I already bought one property in Dubai before I even knew who you were. And now I know that, you know, it's so funny. You're a Middle Eastern, San Diego based, married to a Latin. Um, she, he was also married to a Latin Middle Eastern background. And he's never even been to Dubai. He said, I want to sell my house here in California, San Diego. I want to cash out on what I know I have done so well over the past decade in this house. Take those profits, invest them in Dubai, diversify through a few different investments, rent here in San Diego over the next few years, and then see where my money has taken me. And so I've been helping him build his portfolio, and he's never even been there. So, I mean, I have dozens of stories but that one was really cool because it was close to home most of my investors are actually not san diego based but it was just so fun to have somebody that's not even been there yeah that's willing to sell his house in san diego which i helped him do record-breaking sale in his area in his neighborhood and take that money and just keep riding that incredible wave that's happening in dubai it's you know and, and i think that that's the other part of real estate is that you go through these cycles and transitions like you know what might not have worked for you 10 years ago when you have kids for you sure. can't rent for sure you can realistically do that well, now he actually has four kids and he's renting there you go yeah so i don't i think this is probably the best time to get out of your house if you've been in it for a while and take the capital gains that you've made and make it work for you if you're California, San Diego based. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I'm cautious with that because I've seen some people leave California and then get back here and they can't afford they it. They can't get back into it. That's, that's what's hard. Yeah. So I'm like, true. if you're going to sell, make sure that you have no desire to, to come, come back, back because or like a, my barrier, or make a ton of money in Dubai and then you come back and buy. There bigger. you go. There you go. I mean, but but see, you're also talking about opportunity and this person, you were able to convey. OK, so real estate to me is about trust and relationship. Mm -hmm. So your relationship with this person, he sees you on the billboard. He's asking you a slurry of questions because nobody's selling their house mm -hmm. without getting all their questions Correct. answered. That's too risky. Correct. No one full well, you'll never get back in. No. He's not getting a 3% mm -hmm. interest rate in the next mm -hmm. 10 years mm -hmm. if that's what his rate mm -hmm. was at. So it, it's um, people talk about like you can uh, invest in the stock market, you can do crypto. I get it. I get it. Like everybody's got yeah. there. And I, I think as a finance uh, person in the finance sector, I would say you should look at everything. It depends on stages of your life. But let's look at what's actually built the most wealth historically for people. Look look at most people that have built wealth. You look at McDonald's, Warren Buffett. It, it all gets back to real estate because it's a physical asset. Correct. Correct. And so that's the, that's the thing. Like I, I would never recommend 
all those others. And I know people can get rich quick. I mean, I have my son trying to do this Bitcoin or whatever, all these different things are. (laughs) Gabriel, and he's 18 years old. I said, let's start actually start thinking about building your wealth and your portfolio through real estate, because then building where you have that passive income. And that's what some of my clients are also doing is that they are investing now with with the idea of having that passive income, right. seven to 9% long-term rental returns paid a year at a time because that's how it is in Dubai. They do one-year contracts. And having that and building that, you know. So realistically, it, it it's, it's a lot more feasible to get cash flow in Dubai than this year because the reality I is it's impossible. I don't know how people do it here. I, I really don't know. I mean, well, creative I, financing right now. I mean, the the seller wraparound and all this. Yeah, and and that's risky. I mean, when you get too creative, I think that's when you're jeopardizing. And, and real estate people know how to sell. Like they know how to sell, and I get it. Like we all we are all here to make a living. I also believe in education, and a real exactly. estate advisor yes. is worth their weight in gold because they show you how you could best leverage it. That requires, I mean, there there are few and far between. I would say maybe one out of 10 or two out of 10 care about that strategy. Right. But the people that make it, dude, that they do. Right. So um, have you started investing in Dubai? Um, I, I don't want to talk too much about my personal yeah. investments because my husband will kill me. He told Got me it. I okay, well, fair it. enough. But, but you're there doing business, which says the confidence that you have. What's the what's the growth look like? You said in the in the next year, the population growth, what are they expecting? So they hit 3.5 million residents last year. Yeah. They grew by 100,000 residents in the year. They're planning or the, the projections show that they will double their residents over the next 15 years. And Dubai just got ranked as the number one tourist destination third year in a row, according to TripAdvisor. And then Google just found that Dubai was the number one place that expats were Googling to move to. And I have to tell you that all of, well, I'd say 90%, 90% of my leads and my clients recently from Canada and from the United States, their idea is potentially 10 years down the line right? to move there. Really? Mm-hmm. So it would just basically be buying a second home and then- Buying right now? Yeah. No, not this wouldn't be their second home. Start building their portfolio yeah. now. Because the other thing that's very unique about Dubai, Ollie, is that what I specialize in is it called pre-construction off-plan pro- projects. Okay. That's when you get in, the best pricing from the developer, pre-construction, right? And you're getting in at probably about 20, 30% less than if you bought a ready-made property. You're at 0% financing installment payment to the developer through an escrow account that's managed by the Dubai Land Department for your safety over the usual three-year construction period. But what's awesome is you're not stuck. After you've paid a threshold of about 40%, you can then flip it and sell it cash out on your capital appreciation even before the project is completed. So you are not stuck. And a lot of people have made a lot of their money the past couple of years with that. Does that make sense? Oh, it makes, I mean, so you're not stuck. with money, it's, you're not it's stuck. come on. Now, it's, if you choose that you want to hold it, yeah. at that time, you have to come down with the rest. So typically you're in at about 60% before handover. Right before handover is when you owe the final payment due, right before you get the keys. You can get financing in Dubai through Dubai Bank for up to 60% as a foreigner, or you pay cash, or you sell it at that point and you take that money and we roll it into the next one. So most of my investors right now are looking at what how we keep on building, rolling, creating, so that in the 10-year mark, that passive income is yeah. For their they're living. looking. I mean, you just got it. You're looking at the simple numbers. They got to build. You're going to get double in population. So it's funny when you look at the history of real estate and you see the explosion. Like you could have like San Diego, San Diego. How San Diego has not been the most expensive city in California just blows the mind mm-hmm. because it takes like major events. Uh-huh. For everyone to realize, like, why in the world have I not moved to San Diego and remote work? Like, I could live in Dubai and still do my job in California. Correct. Correct. And it's they crazy. love, and they offer the golden visa. 
So with a min minimum investment of 2 million dirhams, which is about 500,000 US dollars, you then can have the golden visa, which is good for 10 years, and you can sponsor your spouse, your unmarried children, and people that work for you as well. And so there are the benefits of that, where you can open a bank account, get a driver's license, have health insurance, not worry about the maximum stay there. And that golden visa has been a huge topic on my podcast, actually. So really? obviously a lot of people are really interested in it, yeah. So you're getting a ton of questions about the Golden Visa. Yes, and I actually, um, one of my podcast interviews was is with a financial concierge, Ziba Majithia, and she helps walk people through it, not just through real estate investments. The Golden Visa is also attracting talented and educated people in all different sectors. And that's part of the beauty of Dubai is that they're appealing not just to wealthy people that can come and invest property, but let's say if you're an athlete or if you're top of your class in some right. sort of topic, or you know if you're a uh, PhD, or if you graduate from certain universities, you can get a golden visa to live G there. Gigi, we've seen some of the equity people have gained over the past like four years. I think there's a lot of wealthy people oh, in San are? Diego. I mean, oh, rich, in, Diego. rich yes. in real estate yeah. is like, whoa, yeah. okay. I mean, you look at some of the equity, like mm -hmm. we've exploded to see people doubling mm -hmm. their home values in a matter of four or five years. It's just, mm -hmm. and, and, and what are your thoughts? Like you've been, you're a San Diego native. Are you surprised by what home prices are? I mean, just going off topic, are you surprised? I'm not surprised, but I don't know how much further higher they can go. I don't know okay. how people, I know that we're having max numbers of people moving out of California, right? Yeah. We know that the United States right now has seen an uptick of people looking for that second passport. So I, I know people are moving to Texas, for example, right? We have so many yeah. people moving to Texas. But even Texas, I had a client today before I was here. That's why I was a couple minutes late. And he was, he said, I have three, I'm Bay Area based. I have three rental, no, five rental properties in Texas. Okay. I don't believe it's feasible anymore for my next one to be there. I'd like to purchase in Dubai. Okay. Um, I don't know how much higher I can go, but I said that last year and it continued to go higher. I do believe a study just came out right now or a report just saying that it is going to go a little bit higher next year. I guess yeah. California just wants the most elite. I mean, I they're not making it. And I'm talking about like, I know a lot of high income earning people, highly educated, can't do it anymore. So, Oh, you, I mean, yeah, it, it's as a, as a finance person, I think that the hardest part is like, it, it's too risky. The risk doesn't, mm -hmm. Makes sense with the reward that you're gonna and get. And it's boring here. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm oh no no no! It's thing. okay. The other thing I've is, never is that had anyone like I'm gonna go viral on this because I'm gonna be like Gigi said San Diego's boring. boring. I am but so you bored. also said you also said it is the finest city. So it's America's so finest I'll, city. So I'll, we'll we'll cut that together. Yes. So some will not like you. Some will love you. And some will understand me. And, and some will get you. And those who <laughs> we live in such a bubble. And this right. is the reason why I made my children travel so much growing up, is that we live in such a bubble. We think we're the center of the world. We think that America is the center of the world. When you get out of here and you travel and you go to other countries and other continents and you realize, like everybody, I, have you been to America? No, why would I go there? Have you been to America? No, why would I go there? Have you been to America? No, why would I go there? I'm like, what do you mean? It's America. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? What? You get out of here and you're like, wait a minute, we're not the center of the world. <laughs> Actually, Dubai is within seven hours of, I think, 85% of the world. That's more the center of the world than we are both physically and on a more, you know, uh, metaphorical sense. So I'm very, very interested in being more global. What, what I'm excited about is this. I, I believe like one of the advantages that we get as podcast hosts is we get to learn a lot from very smart people that are doing great things. And when you said you were doing to buy real estate, I'm like, okay. Cause I've been very curious about like real estate in Mexico. It, it's booming there too. But is it and safe? I'm like, what's up? But is it safe? Oh, I didn't know. Right. I wasn't talking. You, you know, that's cause I that's love That's what Mexico. I was saying. But I, I've never encouraged one of my investors mm -hmm. to go, hey, mm -hmm. by the way, I know you have this liquid capital, mm -hmm. California, US doesn't make sense. Here's an alternative. I, I haven't really mm -hmm. been researching it. So it's good to meet someone that's thinking outside the box. And everyone, I think, is curious about Dubai. Like the leader's goal is to stand out. Correct. He wants to stand out. Number he one. wants the- Number one. The attention. Yes. I want to be number one. Yes. What's wrong with that? There's, yeah. I mean, great. Hey, hey, the government is doing for the people. Awesome. Correct. Perfect. It's working. Correct. Who are you going to argue? Correct. So 
I think that what I've learned is like opportunity and real estate exists. It's when you recognize it's there, it's already too late. So you have True. to be ahead of things, you know, and I've studied the best of the best because I'm not one of those real estate people that says, Hey, I know everything. I'm like, dude, it changed. It's so different yeah. real estate today than from a year ago to two years ago. Uh -huh. So you're constantly having to educate yourself. And this is a viable thing uh -huh. because I'm curious, like, what what are, what are they selling for? Mm -hmm. You know, what on average, what's the what's the equity that they're going to gain? Mm -hmm. Now I'm curious. Mm -hmm. So that way I could take it to some of my investors saying, hey, have you ever considered, you know, Dubai as a place to mm -hmm. buy real estate? If the safety is there, if the growth is there, if the cash flow is there, if the numbers make mm -hmm. sense, if you get a golden visa, if you have foots on the ground, mm -hmm. You know, you're basically becoming that connector. And the cool thing is we have you in San Diego mm -hmm. as our connection. So good for you. Thank like, you. It's different. It's awesome. And I want to touch, I don't know if I touched upon it enough, but because you, you made me think about this with Mexico. I love Mexico, by the way. My husband's Mexican. We go to TJ once. You, you love Mexico because your husband's Mexican? No. <laughs> I love Mexico, but my husband is Mexican. And we actually, not for, this is not glamorous but we built houses for the homeless in tj oh so my children are humanitarians and um my daughter actually has been on the disney show she's a marvel hero comic made after her because she and her brother have collectively raised money and built over 23 homes for homeless family families in tj mexico we just went down last tuesday to build their 23rd home and they've raised all the money here in san diego through their friends and not through parents giving them the money but they have done fundraisers for seven years through build a miracle and build a miracle is a nonprofit organization founded by Chris and Julianne North here in San Diego. And they, Build a Miracle, has built over 500 homes for families in TJ, Mexico. That was just a side note, because I just think it's an important thing. It's the biggest legacy oh, of my life. Oh, I that love I'm, that you did that. Thank you. Um, it's my kids. I want to meet them. Uh, they're, they're, I want to have them on the podcast. You. I would love thank to you. have your, have you ever had the kids on the podcast talking about that? My kids have been on TV 200 times. Oh, They've okay. been on the Good Morning America, Today Show, E! News, Entertainment Let's Tonight, go. CNN, HLN, People Magazine, because of their work. My daughter's super shy about it, but I make them do it because every time they go on, somebody else reaches out and says, we want to donate money. I was that was the first thing that popped into my head. I would love to like highlight that every time they raise awareness. Hey, GD, let's, let's talk about parenting. You went there. I love what. So how have you? So cool. Thank like you. that is freaking Thank awesome. You. Good for you for. You. It wasn't me. I have to tell you, this is where you did raise them. Let, let's talk about that. You raised them. Yes. Like, what did you and your husband do? That that they're. They're so community driven to make a difference. I will tell you the best decision we ever made was the school to send them to. Hmm. And that's also the reason why I'm still working at 50 years old is the school we sent them to. Um, yeah. So they attended Notre Dame Academy, which is in Carmel Valley. And it's a Catholic school. And the entire mission of the school is about giving back. So when my daughter was in seventh grade, she... Uh, the, her PE coach, Daniela's PE coach, had come to the school and they sponsored a project every year. And this year, this PE coach said, we're going to sponsor this Build a Miracle project. We're going to go down to TJ. We're going to raise the money. At that time, it was only $16,000 to take a family from living in squalor, okay, with no running water, electricity, plumbing, a bathroom, a shower, nothing, to a fully furnished house with running water, electricity, plumbing, and furniture and a community help, education for their kids, et cetera. So the entire school raised that 16,000. You know, every parent, every family, every kid put in a little bit. We collect collectively raised it. I believe that the transformative decision was me forcing our family to go down to build that house with our hands. Because my daughter was a very shy 12 year old little girl and my son was 10 at that time. And I also have an older daughter and she came with us as well. But when we went down, and we met these families face to face and we're building their house and we're leaving, seeing the shack that they're living in and asking them, where do you go to the bathroom? And they're telling us, oh, in the dirt, how do you shower? We'll use the hose. And here we are with having raised 16 grand, completely transforming the trajectory of that entire family's life and their community. It was super transformative, especially for my daughter. So that day when we came home, my daughter didn't even have a cell phone at that time. And she said to me, I love what we did, but I want to do more. I said, and I'm like, job well done, mom. 
job well done, right? That like empathy factor. My daughter's empathetic. That's all I thought it was going to be. She's like, I'm going to build my own house. I'm going to raise 16000 on my own. I said, well, how are you going to do that? She goes, may I borrow your phone? I'm like, okay. She comes back 15 minutes later, and she said, I found 15 other kids. We're going to spend this summer raising $1,000 each. I'm going to collect the money. I'm like, Sh- okay, sure, cool. But I'm so excited. And she freaking did it. She stayed on top of those 15 kids, and they've done it 23 times over since then. Yeah. Mom. Yeah. Mom. So it wasn't me, though. Do you know what I well, mean? Well, what I mean is you got to be proud as a parent. Oh, that's, that's why I what I meant. Up. That's why I brought it up. It is my, I'm hoping. That's what I meant. Like, when mom. my days are over and I'm up there, I'm like, but God, yeah. I know I was naughty, but that's my kid down there. <laughs> Can I get in? <laughs> <laughs> Please no, you in. didn't. No, you freaking didn't. You're going to get into heaven <laughs> leveraging kid. the kids. It's my kid. Okay. <laughs> I, that's my ticket i hope I, hey that you can manifest anything you say that's verbally um, so. I've, I've been talking about parenting a lot more on the podcast and I'm, I'm concerned about our communities so of all of your brand podcasts isn't like just about individual brands it's about like our community brands like what are we doing to really demonstrate what giving looks like okay. to our kids and and going down to TJ, you know, I've I've had a few guests on right now that's blown my mind. You know, uh, our guest yesterday, him and his daughter went and give out all kinds of blankets, and they oh, did it themselves. Yeah, I love during that. the holidays, they went under the bridges. Beautiful. The mom was not happy about that at all. But he's like, dude, I I grew up hard. Like we made their night that one night made all the. I mean, I'm getting chills right oh. now. That one night, that homeless person, like they had a warm blanket oh. that was clean. Someone actually gave, oh. cared about them. Like your daughter, like the, what was that family? Like one of those kids is gonna do something great. Oh my God, it was. It, we, do you we, know what I mean? That, oh, that's so cool. They're going to college now. Last Tuesday we went down. Daniela, my daughter now attends college in Chicago. She goes to Loyola, Chicago. But she came, and the goal is that every summer for the rest of our lives, our family, no matter where we end up globally, will come back to at least build one house again a year through my kids' fundraising. So we went on Tuesday for my son. Actually, my son just graduated from Cathedral Catholic High School, and he and his VP of the Build America Club that he started, actually, my, my daughter started it. He took it over. His, um, his VP, Ava Simone, the two them raised enough money to build another house so tuesday we went down to build it and to see these kids that we saw five years ago that are now graduating from high school and going to college and one after another reading letters to my kids i I don't want to cry but they say that we think about you every single day of our lives that there's not a day that goes by that we don't think of you as our angels and to me like that's yeah it's everything that's everything so it's the rent we pay for living in, in this world. And like I talk about fancy, Did you global, say that's the rent we pay? What is it? Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. I, that's I really feel it's great. our duty. And so, yes, I, I've given my children a very grand lifestyle of traveling to Europe since they were five years old and going to a Catholic private school and living a great life here in San Diego and traveling so much. And the other side of it is the role that they have played in giving back and doing for others and will continue. It wasn't just to get into college and get those college essays, but they will continue as long as I'm alive, you know, um, and I, I, they will continue to give back. Um, you said, uh, you said something that I want to touch on real quick, which was you, you forced them, even though they don't want to get on camera, how come, how come you believe in, I agree with you. I agree with you. I have a very strong parenting approach. Um, I, I look at it as my responsibility to the community to share with my kids that life is not easy. You work for everything that you earn and life is more than just about yourself. Yes. That, that is a foundation absolutely. of what I believe. How come you're okay with them being uncomfortable? Oh, I'm uncomfortable all the time. I, that mean, That's meaningless to me to be uncomfortable. Yeah. Now, let me tell you, when the camera turns on, there's nothing uncomfortable about them. You you can watch their right. interviews yeah. and it's natural because it comes from the heart. Mm. With my daughter, she's always like, that's not the reason why I'm doing it. I don't want to appear like I'm doing it because you're going to get me on TV or get me in a magazine. And I said, honey, by now, oh, got you. at this point, nobody's thinking that about you. Yeah. <laughs> You've been on 200. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> at this, well, no, because of how much she's done. Right. It, it's irrelevant. I get it though. I get it because you don't get, you know, 
I, I had a good client of mine call me out there like, uh, are you still doing lending? I'm like, whoa, whoa. Yeah, I'm doing lending. It's because like we get so caught up in doing one thing, you know, and, and I never, I don't want to talk about what a great lender I am because I'm not a great mm -hmm. lender. I'm a great mortgage advisor because mm -hmm. I care about people. Mm -hmm. That's what makes me great. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to boast about it. So I understand yeah. where she's coming yeah. from. She's like, I'm not doing this yeah. to get on TV. Like thing, I'm doing it because of my heart. 100%. We with Disney, what happened is they had heard about her in one of the it's one of the cool. articles and they reached out and they made us sign a contract. They didn't even tell us that it was for she's on a Disney show called The Marvel Hero Project and it's a 20-minute episode that follows her journey. They followed us around for 2 years. We didn't know why they had cameras and were following us around. We they didn't we didn't know it was for a Disney show. We knew it was for a national international TV show that was documenting 16 children around the world doing amazing things, but we didn't know what it was until the final surprise. And she was so shy about it all. She was so shy, but if you meet Danielle, you'll understand it's who she is. She is a humanitarian at heart. It's who she is. She doesn't care if anybody knows about it, but me being a PR firm and publicist, I know that that's how you get all these other kids from around the country. Kids writing her saying, hey, I saw you in Good Morning America. Because of you, I started this charity at my school. Hey, I saw you on the Today Show. Because of you, I'm fundraising, collecting clothes for the homeless. And then how many matches we've had from TV shows or people that have seen us that have met and matched. So for me, it's always that PR hat, like, okay, how do we expand this? How do we expand it? How do we expand it? And some other girl is going to see Danielle and be like, I'll take the baton. And, they, and that's what's happened. I love it. So cool. Like that was, I mean, Dubai was exciting. Daniel was it's even more better. Meaningful. This is more meaningful. It, it's, this is meaning. So you have a podcast. Do you do much storytelling or is it, is your podcast more about like education? Education. Okay. Do you but think you know that there's I'm a, on? yeah, I'm curious. I'm on Instagram and I'm very, very active on Instagram. Yeah. I mean, comments all the time, like you post too much. So I do a lot of stories uh, telling on my Instagram, on my stories, like for example, every time we go to TJ, like last week, I document the entire experience. So I do a share a lot about these things via my Instagram channel. PR. But, yes. <laughs> and well, I'm just a very open, transparent human being. I love that. I am. Yeah. You know, Gigi, when I met you, I. I didn't believe this. Like uh, I got into like the personal development, like after 40, you know, you get into the corporate America thing, you get into the family thing and you know, people that are very, very driven internally, you're ferocious by the way, internally. <laughs> uh, so it doesn't surprise me about like Danielle and what, what she accomplished. She's going to Chicago, right? She's in Loyola, Chicago. Okay. Yeah. So um, that doesn't surprise me. Like yeah. she's, it's like it, so much of you, do you know what I mean? The best, you, the you, best of me. And then my son just got into amen. LMU, bull ride, LMU. There you go. Best of me. And then my eldest daughter, amazing. She's incredible. And she's 30 years old and she lives here in San Diego and she's in medical sales. So yeah, the, my children are the best of my, both my husband and me. You know, and, and I think that's the entrepreneurship journey and story I want to tell is mm -hmm. that our kids are always watching. Mm -hmm. They're Absolutely. always watching, you know, regardless of what age you are. Like, congratulations to your son for graduating. Thank you. Mine just my oldest graduate. Ooh. That was weird. Where's he gonna go? Uh, he's gonna become a fireman. Oh he's gonna go to EMT. How oh, amazing. oh, Gigi, I'm getting like I'm gonna I'm gonna cry. You, don't you don't you don't get to make me cry. <laughs> um, to have him tell me like, hey, I'm not gonna go to college. That's not for me. Uh, he's incredible. I mean, just fit, just improved his wow. grades. Like he really just started to blossom into a man and i've been treating him like a man since 16. oh man it's beautiful i know you can't make it's me so cry emotional. all right so what i was gonna say is like for them to actually want to give back to their community you're like dude D done thank goodness i didn't mess this I one up it. I thank goodness it. no i'm so proud of my kids it's so hard Gigi. were you like sometimes you just sit there as a parent and you're like dude can i do anything right it just like you there's know, no and moments. Th they probably want me to say that because they bash me a lot, and I'm like, no, no, oh, no. I'm an amazing mom. I don't care. <laughs> like, no, you yell too much. I'm like, so I'm great. Oh, oh no, you just. Funny. I'm like, yeah, you can't. I really have. You know why? I didn't parent on accident. So a little bit more about my backstory is I had an arranged marriage 
at 19 years old. I was one year into UCSD. I was pre-law. I was going to go anywhere. But I got married off. Chaldean right. family set it up. I dated him for two weeks before my engagement, five months before my wedding. Now I'm married. I'm at UCSD. I'm wanting to do much further, but then I got pregnant. So I had to take a semester off. I still graduated a five-year program in four years, but I got divorced at 22 with a two-year-old and basically kind of got disowned by most of my family members. Everyone's come around now, but I was on my own. So I'm a 22-year-old with a two-year-old and very little family and community support living in, in El Cajon is where I was living at the time where a lot of the Chaldeans live. And I was out in the world on my own. And so I don't think I really had, or I know I did not have the proper parenting tools, but here I am with this two-year-old kid, a daughter. And I said, I will be damned if I don't do this right. Luckily, I got into pharmaceutical sales and who am I calling on? Psychiatrists. So I would take a notebook and I would sit for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snack with a different child psychiatrist all day because that was who I was dealing with from a business standpoint. And I would say, how do I raise my daughter? Because this is where I come from and this is what I want. How do I raise? And I took notes ferociously and read every book and did my own therapy to figure out how to be the best parent that I can. Am I perfect? No. Have I made mistakes? No. But I am damn proud of the mom that I have been to my children. So I don't really get caught up in, can I, I do anything it. right? It's more like, you guys better appreciate. <laughs> and, and I get that. I guess what, what I was referencing is that, you know, it, it's being a parent is such a, being a mortgage advisor isn't as emotional as being a parent. Of course. You're, you're analyzing things. You're like, man, I hope they, like, come on, be hard. Like, don't be entitled. Don't, get off the that phone. Entitlement get off the, the phone. Problem. Get off the phone. That entitlement is the biggest problem. Especially living the in the entitlement biggest is, problem. Oh, and, and 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 to see them grow up and to see them doing hard things on their own, they're thinking, they're listening, they're watching. That's what I wanted to share. Is that's what I've learned, and that's why I appreciate because that intensity. I think to you living life, you take you took to parenting, mm -hmm. and we're talking about Danielle, and you said you know it's not me, mm -hmm. it's her. Mm -hmm. I want to share something with you. At 22 years old, you went and got yourself educated on becoming mm -hmm. a parent. Mm -hmm. you, I mean, so those are the, the moments where you just sit here and you're getting to know someone and you're like, actually, that was the moment. Like you did all mm -hmm. the work then. Yeah. So you could realize like, hey, I want to do better. Yep. I want to be there. And I think like this whole parenting and friends don't get that. Yeah. Like I can't, I can't be your friend because I have to tell you things yeah. that the world is going to teach you if you don't hear about it and do it yeah. and experience does matter. Yes. And so I think I appreciate your energy. I appreciate your candor and your openness. And it's like kids that are getting, doing hard shit. They have hard parents that are doing them how Absolutely. to do hard shit. Absolutely. W without a doubt. <laughs> Gigi. <laughs> yes. Did you have fun? <laughs> Fun. Are you coming back? <laughs> I would. If you have me back, you're actually next. <laughs> Gigi Benitez, we're going to put all our contact information, your Dubai Connect Thank podcast. You. Thank you. You got the PR. I'm, I'm going to talk to her about public relations. Mm -hmm. Offline. I think you're doing pretty good. <laughs> did you have a Did you have a great time? I did. I I had such a great time. You're such a kind hearted person. You could tell that you're so sincere and you're a great listener, by the way. Because I notice you repeat like you actually heard me because I talk a lot, but you heard. <laughs> so thank you. I'm honored to know you and excited to see how we continue to collaborate together as well. Oh, absolutely. And I'm. You know what I'm at also happy about. You're from our hometown. Yes. You're from San Diego. Way to represent. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Yes. It makes a difference. I love this place. <laughs> it's expensive, but that's why we all working. <laughs> that's why we're still working. <laughs> Gigi Benitez.